Hi, I'm Anson Garcia with Verizon, and today's video is for two people. One, just somebody trying to get a handle on what Microsoft Voice is all about. What is calling plan? What do you get with it? What do you get with a regular E1 through E4? What is phone system, and what happens when you apply that to a user? So that's kind of one respect, and then kind of an overview of... Um, what those particular licenses look like in Microsoft Office 365 and MS Teams portals and things like that. And then secondly, when I was configuring this stuff, um, I really couldn't put it together. Uh, there's a lot of parts and pieces out there, and there wasn't really one video with somebody, you know, that knew a little bit about Teams and Office 365 and uh, um, needed to go configure calling plan phone system. Uh, port some numbers in, um, uh, direct routing, configure direct routing, things like that. There wasn't one video that kind of put it all together and, and gave me just enough where I could understand and go look for the right blogs and look for the right commands inside Microsoft and stuff like that. So two particular people and at the very end it's more geared towards the second um, particular person looking for those configuration commands and how things are done in the Skype for Business Legacy Portal, Microsoft Teams, and admin, the Office 365 admin, because you really need all three of those and understand how all three of those work together to um, deploy Microsoft Voice. So hopefully this is helpful to you and uh, let's get started. Okay, here's the agenda, and I'll put the agenda items in the timeline in the description below. So if you want to fast forward to each one of these, you can go ahead and do so. So we're going to look at the phone system license. We're going to take a look at phone system virtual licenses. We're going to take a look at calling plans, direct routing, and how voice routing works in Microsoft Teams. So let's get started. Okay, here's your typical enterprise voice slide that you would see from Microsoft. Now, you can see that we have Office 365. We, we know that we have Microsoft Teams and several workloads under there. We're talking about voice stuff, so we're going to be looking at phone system. Now, that is a license. Microsoft Teams is not a license. It comes with E1 through E4 or E5. Uh, phone system is a license, and basically what Microsoft tells us is it enables PBX features and then underneath the phone system we got two ways we can go or we can do both at the same time we can use Microsoft calling plans and we can use direct routing what does this do for us it allows us to call PSDN phone numbers here is the Microsoft phone system license so what is phone system it used to be just a bit of history about eight months ago phone system license meant if you added a phone system license um, through uh, from E1 to E4 licenses, or Office 365 licenses, or you had an E5 license, you were going to get an, a little phone on your Microsoft Teams, all right? Uh, and that phone tab allowed you to make phone calls internally, okay, or externally if you had some extra licenses. But that's what it was. Now it's a little bit more vague. It's kind of shifting a little bit. And let me um, show you how it's shifting. So uh, an E5 includes the phone system, right? Microsoft describes phone system licenses as giving advanced telephony features to a user. What is advanced telephony features? Well, if you go look at that URL right there, and I'll put that URL in the description as well. If you go look here, it's going to kind of give you a, a, a you know, a two-column uh, table that's going to say, here's the feature, here's the description, and basically this is what you get with phone system. But it's not right. It's not right anymore. So remember I said it used to give you the phone when you added phone system license. Now all E1 through E5 licenses get in Teams a phone, so you can call anybody, right, within your tenant outside of your tenant, not PSDN or anything like that. I want you to look at this right here, and I'm just trying to drive home a point right now. When you look at this document that says what you get with Microsoft Phone System License, it's not exactly right. 
okay? And an example is the SIM ring, okay? That works for only phone system license users. That's something in this document that says SIM ring. That's what SIM ring is. We all know what that is. And you get it with phone system. Okay, that column and row is right. But there's another one in there. And there's several like this. However, here's another example. Call hold in this document says you need a phone system license. That is not true. You can have two users with E1 licenses and they can call each other and each of them can put each other on hold. So is Microsoft being deceptive? No, I don't think they're being deceptive. I think what's happening is they're adding more and more features from the phone system license, the advanced telephony features, and moving them over to just the regular O365 E1 through E4 license. Okay, we're gonna look at two things here, a resource user account and a phone system virtual user license. I have to talk about one to talk about the other. So let's talk about resource user first. Everything inside Microsoft Teams and Skype for Business online is a user. Kind of think of it that way, it's a user. So we all know what advanced calling features are that Teams has. It has auto attendant, it has call queues, as well as some other things that they call advanced uh, features. But those two things take users. So an auto attendant and a call queue takes a user and you attach the feature to a user, so to speak. Okay, so just think about that for a second. And then that user needs a phone system license. Okay, remember phone system licenses cost money. So what Microsoft did here is let's create a resource user. Okay, that's a, a, a resource user is just a user in Office 365, but it doesn't have any licenses associated with it. Office 365 or 365 licenses, you don't have to give it an E1 through E5 license. It's just a resource user. It's a user in there. However, you can give it a phone system virtual license. So it becomes a free user, so to speak. Okay, so it's a free user. It's a user in there and you can give this phone system virtual user license. Now, if you create an auto attendant, you attach this resource user to it and you attach this virtual phone system license to it, which is free. Now you can have an auto attendant or call queue without any paying any money. And then you can attach a resource number to it or a service number to it later on, but we'll get to that later. So just real quickly, let's recap here. A resource user is used for auto attendant and call queues. It's a disabled user object, so it's not able to log in to 365 and, and run SharePoint or have an inbox or anything like that. Okay, the phone system virtual user license add-on is free and it gives a resource, it gives the phone system advanced features to the resource and then, or the resource account, and it enables advanced telephony features, right, for auto attendant and call, uh, call queuing. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. Um, the resource user account and phone system user license together provide, just think of it as providing auto attendant and call queuing. Okay, you'll need one of those. You'll need one resource each and a phone system virtual user license for each call queue and each auto attendant that you have, even if you're nesting them in, uh, in, you know, within each other. Excuse me, if you're nesting them like a call queue that has branches, you only need them the first one uh, for that particular uh, call queue. Okay, and if you need a DID number, you can acquire a service number and you can assign that service number as well uh, to this. Now this is interesting. I've assigned service numbers, but didn't have to buy a calling plan. So I couldn't figure that one out. Maybe if you figure it out, you can put it in the description below. But, you know, a calling plan is what gives you a DID number. And uh, I didn't have to pay for that. I didn't have to have a calling license or calling plan to have a DID number. So that was interesting, I felt. Again, if you figure that one out, put it in the description below. Okay, now we're changing gears to calling plan license. Remember, calling plan license and direct routing both have to do with DID numbers. Okay, 
direct inward dial numbers and, and the ability to dial the PSTN as well. Okay, so it's always an add-on license. So this particular license here, the calling plan license, is always an add-on license. So you're going to add it on for E1 through E5. So any, any 365 E1 or E5 subscription or uh, licenses that you buy, you still have to add on the calling plan license. It gives you a PSDN number. Okay, that's what gives you a PSDN number. Now, I won't get into a lot of the regions and all that stuff, but I'm just giving high-level stuff. You can get numbers in 11 regions today. All right, so when you go buy, if you have 100 users and you say, I want 100 uh, calling plan licenses, you're going to get 100 numbers, and in those 100 numbers, you can give them to your 365 users, your Teams users. Okay, based on the plan is what allows you to call and where to call. Okay, so there's a $12 version right here that gives you domestic calling. There's a domestic and international calling. It's $24. And it allows you to dial also 196 countries. And then there's minutes associated with this and stuff. And you can go uh, look that up on your own. How does it work? Well, as I said, you buy a calling plan, you get a PSDN number, and you sign to a user. That's simple. Not very uh, difficult at all. And what's underneath the hood is what's really interesting. So did Microsoft become a, a telecom? No. What they've done, and they keep this very close to the vest. I don't even know. I think I've only heard one particular service provider. So telephony service provider. Obviously, if you have DID numbers, you're bringing some, you know, trunks into uh, Microsoft Teams, right? So they're bringing them in, into Office 365. They're bringing them in into the cloud, so to speak, and they're plugging them in to your tenants, you know, back there. And in your admin portal, when you say, I want 100 calling plan licenses, and you go get 100 numbers, those numbers just, you, you pull those numbers in. So they come from the service provider, a service provider in the background, you know, it, there's a pool of numbers, and you bring those in, you know, based on what region you want them in, you bring those in. And then when you bring those numbers in, then you assign them to users. So very highly integrated. What I'm saying here, it's all done within the Microsoft portal. Microsoft is like the proxy agent, right? You're buying SIP trunking and DID numbers from, from some other service provider out there and you're bringing them in. It's so integrated into Office 365, Microsoft Teams, that you actually give the numbers inside of Teams. And I'm saying inside of Teams, when I say Teams, so that's pretty cool because it creates kind of a one screen to do everything uh, microsoft team stuff and voice stuff inside there as well here's the um url i'll put that in the description below if you want to look at uh, the calling plans and there's other things in there also like um uh, audio conferencing numbers toll free numbers and toll numbers and things like that what is direct routing most of you guys have already heard about this know a little bit about it and I'm just going to give you a quick overview because I'm trying to do kind of everything in one here. So it allows connecting certain SBCs to your Microsoft phone system. All right. And only certain ones are certified, right? Microsoft is saying, I'm going to certify only these manufacturers and only this software on those particular SBCs. It allows you to give DID numbers to MS Teams. What does that mean? That means that you don't need calling plan. Remember, the calling plan give, gives you numbers from Microsoft service providers that are in the background, right? It integrates inside of the Microsoft Teams portal. So you can give those numbers. Now, we're really bringing a trunk in from an SBC, and then those numbers are given by another service provider, and then you're responsible now to have to get those numbers, right? Have those directory numbers, those uh, phone numbers, and then applying them to users. They're not gonna automatically show up inside the Microsoft Teams portal. There's some manual work that needs to go in here. You gotta go assign these numbers. Um, you know, you're, you're gonna give them from a, a spreadsheet or something like that, and then configure them on to the users. Okay, and we allow PSDN calling out the SBC, yep, to PSDN trunks, fair enough. We're gonna configure this SIP trunk. Okay, how does this, you know, how does this work? How do you do it? If you're a Microsoft guy, you can skip ahead. If you're anybody else, I'll tell you basically what it is. You remote PowerShell into your tenant. Remember, the Office 365 is multi-tenant. 
And so your tenant is your little slice of the pie, your little slice of Microsoft Teams in the cloud. And you can bring up a PowerShell, right? And you can remote PowerShell into your tenant. And now you can apply commands, they're called commandlets, and modules. So you load up a module, a Skype for Business module, and then you can start configuring uh, stuff. And what do you configure? You configure a SIP trunk. So you're gonna need IP address, FQDN, things like that. What ports are you gonna use to your SPC? So you have an SPC over here, you're gonna you know, power, remote PowerShell into your tenant, and then you're gonna you know, configure a SIP trunk, point it to your SBC, right? And then after you're gonna create some routing plans and stuff like that to make sure things route out to that SBC. So one thing to be aware of here, that's kind of weird for us to laugh any guys, is the SBC interface needs to have a public IP address. So that IP, the, your SBC that you buy, and let's just say, for example, it's an on-prem SBC and, and you got, hopefully, Verizon trunks uh, coming to it, but that SBC needs to have a network interface with a public IP address, and then that network interface and that public IP address needs to have a certificate signed. So you're gonna have to do a CSR, what to go with CSR, get that certificate signed, because there needs to be some security, some PKI, some TLS stuff in between your tenant up in the cloud, your Office 365, that SIP trunk there needs to be encrypted, be secured with a, a public certificate. If you are a Skype for Business guy, this looks like old hat to you. If you're a Cisco guy, I'm gonna try to back you into this voice routing stuff that Microsoft does. Let's just do away with that right now. Okay, I want to tell you how voice routing works inside Microsoft Teams Online, all right? Microsoft Teams, all of it's online. Okay, first you create a voice route, okay? I named the voice route, this is the name, it's named Other. Then you create a PSDN usage, okay, and this is the name, US and Canada. Then you create a voice routing policy, and this is the name, US only. And then you go to your users over here, you know, and you give them a routing policy. You see, the US only. See how that's the same there? Okay, so if you just, if you pause this video and kind of take a look at this, you'll kind of figure it out. It's pretty easy. Let me dive a little bit deeper. Your voice route, when you go create your remote power shelling, by the way, into your tenant, that's how this stuff is done. So your remote power shell, do your voice routes, and there's commands for that. You'll find all this stuff online. You create a voice route. That voice route is gonna have a route pattern. There it is, that's the route pattern right there. So you gotta give it some kind of route pattern. If it matches pattern, I'm gonna take this voice route. That voice route is gonna to point to your SBC. There's an FQDN, right? In FQDN, that's gonna be your public interface on your SBC that's on-prem that you're securing with a certificate. Now, you see then the voice route is put into a PSDN usage, okay? Like I went through before. The one thing I want you, I won't go through all this, but you'll get it because look, what if I had two SBCs? What would I create? I would create another voice route. Maybe I call it other one, you know, you know, whatever. But then I could put that other voice route, you know, inside the PSDN usage. Now I'm creating some redundancy, all right? So I nest two voice routes into one PSDN usage, and that gives me two ways, you know, maybe I have redundant SBCs, you know, or maybe I have SBCs in different parts of the country or something like that, and I want, you know, the, these guys to go out one and these other guys to go out two, the, the other one, then I would create several voice routes with PSDN, voice routing policy, and then put the voice routing policy, you know, maybe I call it a voice routing uh, policy east, give it to all my East guys. You know, maybe I do a voice routing policy West. So you can see how this works here. For you Cisco guys, just think of this. Throw out calling search space and partitions. Get those out of your head, all right? Think routing, route lists, route groups, and trunks. If you can think that and know how those flow, you got this. And then all I want you to do right here is kind of see that inside your tenant, there's always this uh, voice route that exists that's called local route. And that just means that you don't have to do any local routing. When you dial someone's number, let me see if any of those numbers are assigned to 
my subscribers here, these people that have Microsoft Teams? If yes, route it to that guy. So in other words, it's going to take this route first, and then it's going to go to other routes that point outside the system. All right, and then what else do I want to do here? I want to emphasize that when you do it this way, there's no magic where numbers are going to enter into the Microsoft Teams admin portal. You're going to have to add these E164, these DID numbers, to the users manually, all right? Not only in their Active Directory or their Azure Active Directory attribute, because they have to be there because when you look up people, right, your number comes when you're doing an LDAP lookup or something like that through some CRM or through your Teams or, or, or some other some other system, but you're going to have to add it there, and then you're going to have to add it to the user itself, remote PowerShell, manipulating your users, and again, there's no click and, you know, uh, click and drag stuff inside Microsoft Teams when you're doing direct routing. It's all manual, remote PowerShell. Okay, let me drive some points home with a few demos. Now, the first thing we want to take a look at is what a user looks like with phone system and calling plan and what a user looks like without phone system and calling plan. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, about eight months ago, when you would buy a phone system license, that's what enabled, let me get this guy right here down, that's what enabled this little telephone. So you would have to buy a phone system license to have this little telephone. That's no longer the case. Okay, now any license gets you the little telephone and you can call each other. Okay, so let's look at this user right here. Let me click on this guy. This guy has um, phone system and calling plan. And you see when I click on this, here's a good indicator that I have a calling plan. Either a calling plan or direct routing. And you see this says dialed number. So I can click on that, that's gonna bring a dial pad. Not only that, but it's gonna show this number. That's my URI, that's my, um, uh, that's my phone number. It's, there's, a, uh, there's a specific attribute in the CSMS online user, I think it is. We'll take a look at that in a second. But uh, that's a good indicator that you have calling plan or direct routing. Okay, now let me show you what a person without calling plan looks like. Excuse me, without phone system and calling plan. So this is just a, this, in fact, this is an E1 user right here. And you can see that he has a call button as well. Look at that. That's a little bit different. If I click on make a call, I can make a call to people within my organization, uh, organization or a URI, right? So that's the difference. Now, let me go back to the phone system if you remember the slide i put up on phone system and i said it was a little sketchy on what exactly comes with phone system i told you one of the things on that document that uh, microsoft puts out is on hold so that's one of the advanced features if you want on hold you need a phone system this person and this is uh thomas payne and we have Alex Garcia right here. They do not have phone system licenses. Okay? So let's just take a look. Let's call Alex. And we'll make a video call. Okay, let's go over here to Alex. And he's going to answer that call. Okay, we don't have a microphone. No problem. And he doesn't have a microphone, so... The mute button is is mute is is not there. But if you look here, okay, let me go ahead and mute that so we don't get any feedback. Look at here. I can hold. I can resume. I can transfer, if I would like to. I can transfer to somebody else. Okay. Um, I believe that document even says you need phone system for transfer, as well. So what I'm trying to say is just be cognizant that document is not exactly what's going on with the E1 through E4 without phone system. Microsoft is moving features over to um, uh, the regular Office 365 license. Okay? Okay, now let's look at users in the admin portal, the 365 admin portal, and the Teams portal, 
and the phone numbers portal and see how these particular users look in these portals when they have calling plan or don't have calling plan. So let's take a look at active users right here. I'm in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Anson Garcia right here has an E5 license. And remember, E5 licenses come with phone system. All right, if I click on him, go to License and Apps, you're going to see that he has an E5 license. Okay, but look at here. There's this phone system license. I just told you that E5 comes with the with a phone system license but you don't see it there well you will see it is down here since it comes with it it's baked in it's going to be down here phone system as part of office 365 e5 license okay similarly or excuse me also you will see that this person has a domestic calling plan remember we went over phone system and calling plan calling plan means that there is a Microsoft calling plan which is similar just to a DID number a PSTN number okay so let's go look at Lynn Garcia now now Lynn is a little bit different she's got an E3 license remember E3s don't come with phone system and I had to purchase a phone system license and there it is right there okay so it's up above not down below where these apps are anything below this are apps that come with let's say all right so that's what she looks like there now you won't find phone numbers or anything like this here Microsoft 365 admin center is just a licensing mechanism let's say for as as it relates to teams anyway and then we have the Microsoft teams admin portal here now let me show you here what a user looks like We'll look at, um, uh, oh, I wanted to show you one more user over here, and that's someone with just an E1. And we have, remember, Thomas Payne here. Thomas Payne, if we look at licenses, and we see that he has an E1 license. There's no phone system calling plan or anything like that uh, for this guy, okay? So um, that tells you that he doesn't have uh, any of those licenses enabled, but he still can make calls and and put people on hold and resume and transfer and things like that all of which used to be only in the are only enabled with the phone system license so they're again they're moving things over to the regular e1 through e4 license and um, yeah I think that's it there let's take a look at how these users look like and let's pick on Anson again and I'm going to show you one more time here just so we start here and you can see the E5 license phone system and all right now we're going to go over to Microsoft Teams admin portal and I'm just going to show you Anson Garcia right there I'm going to show you that he has a number right there you see that number there's no edit or anything like that there and uh, if you want to look at this further you can stop the video but I just want to show you that and where does that number come from it's not in here I can't assign it in here or anything like that nor will you nor is it under voice right here um, there is some documentation some Microsoft documentation and it is 9 26 2019 there's some documentation that that uh, points you to voice and in a sub menu here phone system or phone numbers that's not here in fact that documentation has been out for a couple of months and it still hasn't shown up in my tenant and I haven't heard anybody say that it's in their tenant yet anyway so phone numbers this is the legacy Skype for business admin center okay all these kind of all these things kind of work together to configure uh, and, and PowerShell for that matter and to configure calling plan direct routing anything like that so where do you get numbers from if I buy a, a calling plan remember I buy the calling plan over here I gotta buy it under the purchasing services product and services this is where I buy stuff at in my admin center after that I can go to the phone system in the Skype for Business admin center or what they call a legacy 
If I go over here, you see this legacy portal. What that does is pop out and brings up this site. Okay. This is the old Skype for Business online portal, admin portal. This is where I get numbers from. This is for calling plan. So I've purchased, you know, uh, Office 365 E5. I've purchased some uh, calling plans. And now I need some numbers. I would add numbers right here. This is where I add numbers. And I can add two types of numbers. I can add user numbers or I can add service numbers. I'll talk about service numbers in a second. So uh, when I add numbers, as I understand it, what happens is they populate in here. And uh, I haven't paid for them yet or anything like that. They just, I grab them. And there's several, you know, remember the 11 regions. And so I can go in, in those 11 regions and then sub regions too, like if I want particular cities and things like that. Not all cities are available, but in the U.S., most uh, big cities are there. And then I can, I can purchase, I can, I can bring those numbers in from that service provider telecom that's in the background, right? It's integrated into here. I don't need to uh, deal with a service provider. I bring those numbers in. After I bring those numbers in, then I can assign the number. So there's two types of numbers. Here's a user number. I can click on the user number and then I can assign the number to a user. Okay, this is, this is how you do it. If I click assign there, and it says right there, search for users with voice licenses. This is going to be the only users that will show up here are users that have phone system and calling plan. So don't be surprised if you come in here and you try to give a user a number and they don't show up. It's because you need to go purchase a phone system, phone system license or E5, and then purchase a calling plan and assign it to that user. And sometimes it takes up to 24 hours, so don't think you're gonna do it right away and it's gonna show up here. Some of mine have showed up before, some of them take taken a while, a few hours, and some of them I just came back the next day and then it was there, I don't know how long, maybe it went, you know, what was there during the night or something like that, I could search for that particular user. And then there's some uh, emergency locations that you have to give each number as well when you assign them. So yeah, that is how you assign number. When you assign the number, then all of a sudden you're gonna come over here and under the user, voila, you're gonna see, hey, that user has a number now. And then a little while later, you're gonna log in as that user and this phone icon, this little button will change. And that little button will change into, oh, sorry, said Lynn that little phone button this button right here will change into instead of the yep i gotta click away there and i click here instead of make a call it'll change to dial a number okay so that's how that works okay now let me talk a little bit about resource resources and the virtual phone system license remember we talked about that now this is kind of crazy just stick with me here and this is how it is today again 9 26 2019 this is how i got it to work maybe there's several ways to skin the cat and i'm just talking about the gui you can definitely do it uh, through powershell and it's probably better through powershell but if you're just clicking around this is the way to do it first legacy portal okay you go grab some numbers all right click numbers you're going to do new service numbers all right, remember service numbers are for uh, audio conferencing. They're also for uh, uh, auto attendant and call queues. So if I were to do new numbers here, I would want service numbers, okay? Now, I already have some service numbers here. I'm gonna go back here. You can select the, you, you can kind of get this and you know what I'm getting at. I'm gonna pull some numbers in from that service provider in the background and kind of grab them and hold on to them. Now, if I don't use them, they're gonna disappear in, back into the pool. And they set up, uh, I think they said, uh, what I've read is, is, is 10 days or something like that, or 10 hours, it's something like that, but these will disappear and go back into the pool if I don't assign them. Okay, so now that I've got new service numbers, right, and I have some here, um, now I can, bef before I assign them here, I got to go create a resource account. I know this seems strange, but then I go over here to Teams, and then I'm going to, let's say I do a auto attendant. When I create an auto attendant, and let's see how fast this, this comes up. If I create an auto attendant here, I have to create a resource account. 
Remember, the resource account is a disabled Azure Active Directory account, so it's not a login enabled. I don't have to give it an E5 license or E4, E3, or, or whatever. It used to be you had to do that. Um, uh, all I need to do is create the account. When I create the account here, and I can go through these, these are some simple things that you got to go through. There's nothing... Um, there's nothing difficult to get through here when you when you do an auto attendant and I think there's some videos on how to create an auto attendant but uh, there's no videos telling you where to jump to so once you create the account the resource account that resource account is going to show up over here okay in the Azure Active Directory and if I look right here there is one that I created I think it's this one attendant that's the one that's attached to my auto attendant right now. So once it shows up over here, so I create it in Teams admin portal, it shows up over here. And then what I have to do is go to license, license licenses and apps. And I have to give it that virtual user phone system license. If I'm going to attach it to a um, auto attendant or call queue. So it's kind of weird how they do this here if you're going to do it in the GUI it's kind of odd uh, once that phone system license is attached to the resource account then you can finish making your auto attendant and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second let's cancel this this discard and let me look at one that I already created there it is and you see I added the attendant account right there Okay, once I add the attendant account here, I have, remember I haven't done anything with numbers yet. Once I create, created, and, uh, created the auto attendant and attached the resource account, now I can go through and enable voice inputs and I can do all kind of stuff I can do in you know business hours and blah, 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 do all that stuff. Now, right after that, people will be able to call the auto attendant by just typing in attendant. In other words, what I'm saying here is they don't have a number yet, but I can call the attendant. Something like that. Um, actually, I have to do it over here, I think. There it is. Okay, and I can call the attendant. Okay, I'm not calling a number. I'm just calling a CPURI, and then the attendant will answer and say, hey, dial by name or whatever. Please dial by name and then. So um, anyway, now what if I wanted a PSDN number because it's my main number and I want to say, hey, push one for sales, two for directions and what, what have you. I need a number on there and that's where we go back to portals and we see there that this one has a phone number. How did that phone number get there? Remember, we ported in some numbers over here service numbers all right and you uh, do your region your state your city and you're gonna port in some numbers and there you're just kinda reserving some numbers here I'm not gonna go through this because I already have some over here okay here are the service numbers okay now let me go back to this portal now what I have to do is I have to assign right here so here's where I would assign a number to the resource user, which is connected to the auto attendant or call queue. They're both kind of the you, you, same concept. And this is where I would, online means it's a calling plan, uh, toll free if I chose a toll free number and on premise for direct routing okay so if I did online then I would just search for the number plus one you know three four six I think was one of them or something like that there they are you know and and they're just it's just listing the numbers the service numbers that are over here and then I can grab one and assign it to that particular um, auto attendant and uh, there you have it. The, the call queue is kind of the same way. Um, anyway, let's change gears now. Okay, let's look at how we configure direct routing. So the first thing we want to do is connect up to our tenant through PowerShell. 
Hey, we're in PowerShell. I'm going to set these commands right here for you. You can go ahead and um, stop the video if you want to check out these commands. You have to install the Skype for Business Online module, so be aware of that. And you can download that from uh, Microsoft. Okay, put that away. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to just paste that in there. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Now it's going to ask for my credentials because I'm going to connect up to my tenant. So I need an admin account, obviously. Okay. Here we are. Okay, now that we're connected, I want to check my um, update policy and I want to get this right here. This you can actually do in the GUI as well. And if you guys are familiar with the upgrade policy, uh, the upgrade policy, you'll see that. In fact, let me just put your eyes on it real quick here. In the, let's cancel this, discard. If you look over here in Teams Upgrade. <clears throat> now this is for another video, but just so you know that this has to be um, uh, in coexist, the coexistence mode has to be uh, Teams only. For you know what I'm doing uh, to work to, for direct routing. Okay, <clears throat> um, the first thing we're going to do, or the next thing we're going to do, is going we're going to take a look at, and I'm just going to get the. And you can stop the video and look at these commands. I'm not going to give them all to you, but um, there's the PSTN, um, and I'm just listing some functions here through this git git command and and. You know, I'm not going to give you any PowerShell help there. You can go, there's tons of videos on how to do PowerShell. Okay, I'm going to get the PSTN gateway because that's one of the commands I need to look at my gateway. Now, I can do new CS Online PSTN gateway, but I've already configured mine, but you see I have it in, disabled here. So I had configured it and had it working with a colleague, and then I've shut it down um, because we un unconnected that, uh, that uh, direct routing trunk. But that's it. Th those are the parameters you have under the CS Online PSTN Gateway function, and those are the things you have to configure. Now I'd point you through the I, the FQDN, point you to the uh, FQDN, because remember this has got to be. You're going to have some DNS out there to get to this, obviously, and then you're going to have to have a public certificate, SIP signaling, this or the signaling port, and things like that. And this is your, you know, very very basic SIP trunking parameters here yeah so I'll let you take a look at that and then remember what I said we had to do which we have to to point anybody to here we have to configure the uh, voice routes all right so remember this guy right here remember I had to configure that point it to there and then PSDN usage and voice routing and then apply that to one of the users okay I'll just show you that just real quick some of the commands so if you're using this instead of a blog to kind of configure this, it's pretty easy. Let me, let me do the voice route first. Okay, so let's take a look at the voice routes. There's my voice route, and you can see there's my route pattern. Remember, a voice route needs a route pattern, and it needs to point to somewhere. Right? Where does it point to? No, that's my local route. Sorry. This is that local route I was talking about. Um, we are not talking about that one. Here's the other. Here's my route pattern. And that's where it points to. Okay, very simple. Just, just the, this is the visual representation of that right there. Boom. And then I PSTN usage. Let me grab my PSTN usage. Okay, there is my PSTN usage, and you can see it's US and Canada right there. And then the last thing I need is my voice routing policy. And let me just get the voice routing policy for a particular user here. Here we go. 
and you can see that there's no voice writing policy on, on Lynn Garcia and it's because I have calling plan I've backed off from the the I backed out of the direct routing and just using a uh, calling plan but if I was doing call if I was doing direct routing then you would see that uh, voice writing policy um, there as well let's see is there anything else I want to show you did I miss something yes I did I want to show you the voice writing policy so I kind of got ahead of myself right there there's the voice writing policy right here okay so you can see US and Canada US and Canada and other okay so again the route is here then the uh, usage is here and then the policy is here and then I would give that policy to a user so I kind of jumped the gun on that one so this should be at the end there okay so that's how that works and um, what else is there the numbers that you get from your SIP trunking uh, provider, if you're doing direct routing, then you would go assign those numbers to users. So remember, there's no magic that comes inside the portals anymore with service numbers and user numbers. Uh, that high integration or deep integration with the portals and, and that backend service provider, if you're doing calling plan, everything is kind of manual. And then the way you do that would be with the... Um, on-prem uh, URI so let me show you I'm gonna get user I'm gonna get a user here and there's a lot of attributes to a user so okay so let me get let me get CS online user and the identity is Lynn Garcia so I want to see this one users attributes and there's a lot of attributes out here but in within this attribute there is a line URI and let me just get a little bit more granular I'm gonna pipe this out and I only want to see certain things and there's the command there you can stop the video if you want to check it out but this is the things that I'm I'm you know um, really want to look at if I'm doing direct routing and this one right here I the reason Lynn Garcia has that line URI is because I did calling plan all right now if I didn't do calling plan I was doing direct routing I'd have to go put this URI manually with these uh, PowerShell commands with the set uh, CS online user and then setting that particular attribute now not only that one thing to remember is you also have to do that in Active Directory or in, in Azure Active Directory as well so everything works right what do I mean by that I mean if you're doing direct routing you have to do it in the line URI and then also right here in the admin when you go to somebody say Anson Garcia right this guy you're gonna have to edit their um, phone number attribute there as well so if when people look them up they can um, uh, dial the right number so that's it that is direct routing